Welcome to Medical Confessions, your remedy for serious medicine. I'm Jen. I'm April. And I'm Scott. Today we're going to be talking about sunscreen, what the deal is with uh, the recent news article saying that potentially sunscreen can cause cancer. I liked Um, how you just said potentially. Yes, potentially. (laughs) Pretentious, potentially. Pretentious, (laughs) potential. And we're uh, retouching on this topic. You'll notice on our YouTube channel, we did this topic a while ago, and someone called Jen a misled, misled liberal. Misled liberal. Worst cut down of my life. Because uh, <laughs> cause basically they felt like sunscreen caused the cancer, not the sun itself. So we're going to talk about all things sunscreen related today. Sunscreen related. And this has been a big thing with me, and um, I got a really good uh, dermatologist that was kind enough to put on a UV light and tell me how horrible certain (laughs) parts of my skin were, which is not a shock to me because I've never been good at using sunblock. And um, even through some of the readings that we did for this show, I read that it's the more fair-skinned people that have a lot of the precancerous conditions and that will end up with a lot of the sun damage. So I think I kind of just lived life as a Hispanic female thinking life was going to be easy and I don't burn easily. Um, but little did I know at, you know, 40 plus years old that this sun has wreaked havoc on my skin. I'm going to look like a dried out raisin by the time I'm 50. So <laughs> I've been really interested in how to better protect my family and how to find that balance between um, the, uh, you know, goopiness of sunblock, potentially the chemicals involved, um, but then also not looking like Magda from what was that movie? Something about Mary. Something about Mary. <laughs> have you the leather skin? Yeah. Have you done the face app where it shows you old? Like no, oh, everybody's yeah. doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done it on me. I did it. Um, one of our buddies sent it to us, and it was eerie. Yeah, like I look much... downright hideous. Yeah, my like, God. <laughs> yeah. So you're not worried about the Russians knowing your facial recognition? No, we saw that no after cares. we already used it. I'm like, oh. Hmm. Who cares? I mean, our own government has that. We have passports, for God's sakes. I'm pretty sure our own government has our facial recognition. <laughs> yeah, right. Who cares if Russia does? I have such a boring life that I'm like, do it. <laughs> I'll do, My skin's going to be so sun damaged, they're not going to recognize me anyway. Uh, so, Scott, we've been through this before, but what is... Um, Well, let's talk about um, sun damage and what the different UVA, UVB rays are. What does that even mean? Yeah, what does it mean? Why do we even need sunblock? Why can't we just love the sun as it is? (laughs) Here's the exciting thing about physics in that uh, light is everything you can perceive. Everything in, uh, everything from x-rays, gamma rays, microwave, the light that you can see, all of it is electromagnetic radiation uh, that we call light. uh, ultraviolet light is going to be um, a lot, all light comes in uh, waveforms, and it and it's defined by its wavelength. Um, and visible light is somewhere around uh, 380 to 720 nanometers in length, and that's uh, the um, wavelengths that your eyes can see. Anything that just on the uh, a little more energetic side is ultraviolet light, and Uh, just on the less energetic side is going to be your infrared light. Um, And so uh, the UV light is what we're uh, concerned about because most anything super energetic gets uh, filtered out by our atmosphere. It's going to interact with molecules and just not make it through. Um, But UVA and UVB, um, so just a little bit more energetic than what your eyes can see, makes it through our atmosphere. Um, About 95% of UVA light, which is going to be a little bit less energetic than UVB, will make it through. And because UVB is a little bit more energetic, only about 5% of it gets through. Um, The more energetic something is, um, the less deep it will penetrate your skin. So UVB wavelengths are somewhere between 280 and 315 nanometers, so quite a bit more energetic. So it will actually react a little more with the molecules in your skin and won't penetrate very deeply. UVA is about 315 to 400 nanometers wide, so it will be a little less energetic, so it'll be able to go a little bit deeper into your skin. And everything in sunscreen is trying to either reflect that UV light or absorb it and dissipate it as heat. Well, and just to go back so that the general audience 
understand. So basically the UVB is the stuff that actually burns your skin. So that's the, you get the sunburn and then the UVA, and this is general statement, and then UVA is more of the long-term damage, like the aging effects. Would that well, you be correct? Can, you can kind of say that both is going to do the same thing because UVA is going to be able to penetrate deeper and so it's got better chance of hitting your DNA versus the UVB and so UVB is certainly going to you know affect the outer layer of your skin more because right. that's that's the only layer it can get to okay. um, so but I do believe that you can probably get uh, a sunburn from both because most tanning beds I think are mostly UVA light and oh, okay. you can still get sunburns with that oh, yeah. um, it, but uh, because of that, which is why tanning beds are so bad, like one exposure to a tanning bed when you're young increases your chance of skin cancer later in life by astronomical percentages. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's why so they're just not out there anymore. You're not, don't go in a tanning They're tanning still beds. out there though. There's like two or three in every like mm -hmm. mini mall that you pass. They are everywhere. Which is yeah. crazy. I mean, even the FDA says if you're under 18, don't do that. Do you're that, not allowed yeah. to. A lot of yeah. states don't let you unless you're over 18 because you got to be able to accept the risk of this is probably going to give you cancer right. if you do it. So don't Which do that. I did in high school before like proms and dances. I think and not our only era did I go, did, I got burnt also. Right. <laughs> I only went one time when I was going to go to Mexico, so I thought I'd like pre-tan before I went down there, and all I proceeded to do was burn my butt. <laughs> burn your butt. Because the rest of me was kind of tan anyway, except my butt was all pale, and I get out, and like for the next three days, I couldn't sit down because my feel? butt was burnt. Itchy, and yeah. It's terrible. That is horrible. Been there. Well, and, and, and aside from the tanning beds, I've told you guys a story that I didn't get a lot of sun growing up because I was raised in a in a cold climate but didn't burn easily but I went to Hawaii with a couple of girlfriends like right after my senior year and we went and spent like the whole day on the beach and I burned horrible on across my forehead and my nose like blistered like peeling like ho it was horrible when the other gals that was with me like her whole back and body was horrible but this is where all of my damage is at, like my nose. And even still, like if I get sun, my nose gets like bright pink and red. Like that is definitely my damage area. And it's kind of sad because that is the only time I can ever remember actually getting like sunburned. And it was like 18 years old, ruined the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> Yeah, I was good for burning like once in the beginning of summer and then I was great for the rest of the summer because right. I tanned up and now I'm good. Right. So that was my MO. Just burn in the beginning and you're good. <laughs> and here's April and I like taking turmeric pills and drinking apple cider vinegar, <laughs> but we just wreaked havoc on our skin as young people. <laughs> <laughs> How are those funny. essential oils working for the skin? <laughs> There's probably a mix for this. I'm going to find it. <laughs> oh. So the um, obvious fix or prevention for the UVA, UVB exposure would be to not be in it. Yes. There are health benefits, although you don't need a lot of it. So vitamin D, things like mm -hmm. that, that we get from the sun. It helps produce it. Yes. So, um, but the big one that we're kind of talking about today is sunscreen because that's the one that is kind of, I don't want to say controversial, but there's a lot of schools of thought on what works and stuff. But April, you've got the history on sunscreen. Yes. And it's extensive. It'll be about five minutes. So bear with me. <laughs> uh, uh, sunscreen didn't come about until about the 1900s. Uh, before that, our ancestors relied on natural ingredients. The ancient Greeks used olive oil. Ancient Egyptians used rice and jas jasmine extract. Which olive, olive oil? oil just like potentiate? Like, you like baking think. yourself like in you an oven. Because I know people that well, used to tan with baby oil. Like I think my mom's era, like yep, they, they would use baby too. oil to yeah. tan. And well, and I, I read that a lot of sunscreens now also have coconut oil in them. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Probably made people taste great. But aren't, weren't the Greeks all those like cannibals kind of back then? like olive skinned anyway? Like weren't they kind of dark? Then? Yeah. I, I'm just <laughs> passing along. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on, April. What's the recipe? Scott olive oil and, and what for the skin? <laughs> Scott and I are like pitch Look it up. <laughs> olive oil. Bogus. <laughs> it does seem like they were trying to cook people back then. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally. Well, yeah. you know, and I just got back on it from vacation, but um, the people that I saw um, were like, they had this mud on their face almost. It was like yeah. not sunscreen that I could see. Even my son was like, 
why does it look like they're all but wearing she mud in on? a part of the world because well and it may not be exactly the same i've been to malaysia and they were really huge about like not getting sun exposure oh there. yeah and so i just wonder if they don't use like a form of uh like we've t some of the products we have here that are like zinc you know like thick you know heavy mudish type of stuff maybe yeah. that's what they were using because they're like legit about blocking the sun oh yeah yeah if they weren't if they didn't have an umbrella over them they had that stuff all over their face which it didn't look attractive i'd i'd settle for an umbrella but <laughs> uh, <laughs> settle for a little skin cancer from time to time <laughs> But um, so here comes the numbers. In 1932, an Australian man named H. A. Milton Blake debuted his Hampton sun Hamilton sunscreen. And in 1936, a French chemist and L'Oreal founder Eugene Schuler develops a commercial sunscreen. In 1944, an airman and pharmacist named ben Benjamin Green developed a a sunscreen specifically for members of the U.S. military. It was called Red Vet Pet. <laughs> <laughs> red Vet Pet. He's due a to, rhymer. <laughs> due to the inclusion of red veterinarian petroleum. Oh, okay. The formula had an unsightly red hue, was super sticky, and was also pretty limited in its effectiveness. An Australian chemist named Franz Greeter set out to invent his own sunscreen in 1946. He launched a, a slightly more sophisticated formula that had an estimated SPF of 2 and called it <laughs> Glacier Cream. In the 50s, the Red Vet Pet formulation from the 40s is handed off to a brand we call Coppertone who adopts and eventually commercializes it in 1956. The improved formula, in addition to the famous Copper Tone Girl marketing, helps the sunscreen become more mainstream. In 62, the SPF rating system is developed by Greeter. In 77, water-resistant sunscreen is invented. And in 78, the FDA gets involved uh, with regulations adopting the SPF rating system and issues guidelines that more or less emphasizes how tanning is bad for you and how sunscreen is an absolute must. In 88, an ingredient called avobenzone is approved by the FBA. 1990 and early 2000s, broad spectrum sunscreen become incredibly more important after multiple studies indicate that people are still experiencing melanoma despite habitually wearing sunscreen. All done. Sorry. No, it's okay. No, that's, at one, there's a lot there. Yeah, and at one point you talked about, we all kind of giggled because I, Greeter, I think you said, created an SPF too. Yeah. And we were like, ha ha. You know, but the funny thing is that that was two times better than what the person would normally do because people don't understand what SPF is. And so when you have an SPF of 15, the person can remain in the sun 10 times longer, correct? So it's, uh, so if you burn in 10 minutes an SPF 15, will protect you for 150 that's right, minutes. That's right. Uh, SPF 30 will protect you for 300 minutes, so an SPF 2 will protect you for 20 minutes. But a SPF of 15 will block out 93% of harmful rays. Yes, it won't it, block out all, all of, of the them, rays. But every time you go up, so if you go to a 30, it's only like 96%. And if you go up to uh, you know, an SPF of 50, it's like 98%. So it gets a little bit better. But even an SPF of two was better than them not having anything. So the time yeah. period that was not a bad, bad way for them to better be going. Nothing. Right, right. Yeah. So, I, you know, hats off. Yeah, That's cool. good for yeah. them. That's cool. That's good. Well, so I guess the question for today was the benefits of sunscreen versus the, the risks. risks. And the reason that I have so many products here and April contributed is because there's lots of options. That's not the 1950s. So we're not just taking like the old lifeguard like zinc, even though I do have a stick of that and it is really helpful if I'm just going to work out in the garden and I know I'm going to have like direct exposure. But there's a lot of options for people. You don't have to just stick with one thing. You can get broad spectrum, but you can have um, sunblocks and products that will help with whatever your daily activity is. So April and I were talking before this episode that most um, skincare products, makeups, things like that. I even put Mederma because of all of my lime juice burns. Mm -hmm. I put this stuff. I do. 
I put that on all the time, and I didn't even realize that this version of Moderma even has SPF of 30 in it. Mm. So I think a lot of times if you just take the time to buy a product that has some in it for your face and maybe even your hands or whatever you're exposed to, um, you at least start with a little bit of protection. I know most uh, as, uh, suntan lotions um, wear off after two hours. So if you are actually going to be out in indirect sun, you have to reapply every couple hours. But there's not really an excuse for people to not use it if you're going to have long exposures. Yeah, the, I think the controversy started, and with this whole conversation of why we're doing this this episode now, um, is because in May on uh, May 6th of 2019, in uh, the Journal of American Medical Association, uh, there was a random clinical trial. Um, and it was titled The Effect of Sunscreen Application Under Maximal Use Conditions and the Plasma Concentration of Sunscreen Active Ingredients. So basically the FDA hasn't ever come out and said, okay, the ingredients in sunscreen that's helping reflect the UVA and um, you know dissipate the UVB into heat, um, that gets into your body, does that cause any health effects? Uh, so what the FDA says that any uh, chemical um, that gets into your body and exceeds 0.5 nanograms per milliliter needs to be um, uh, tested for its uh, ability to cause cancer and uh, developmental issues in reproduction. So is it going to hurt the babies, right? And the problem is we just haven't done any studies on them yet. Right. Um, and what this, uh, this clinical trial showed uh, in May of this year is that all of the there are four main ingredients in most all of sunscreens and all of those ingredients exceed that 0.5 nanograms per milliliter within one day of you applying it to your skin, some of them within two hours. And these the concentrations exceed that level for about seven days. So once you put it on, we're gonna exceed that level for seven days are they going to cause any health effects? And so, you know, if you just say, okay, well, we've never tested it, it might cause cancer. Ah, well, that's not what it's saying. What it's saying is we need to test it to see if it does. So have they done the same test? Like if you drink Coke? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just thinking that there's so many other things that we probably have in our lives that are probably just as likely to leave chemicals in our bodies for however long. Mm -hmm. I would feel like for me... The bigger risk would be like the aerosol version of the sunblocks. Like if you're spraying your kids and you're breathing it in, to me that seems like a bigger risk than... Well, it's going to get in quicker, but either way. So one of the... the uh, what's interesting about this is anyone over the age of six has these things are testing positive for these chemicals already without using sunscreen because they're in almost everything. They're in plastics and, and quite a few other things you're coming into contact with every day, makeups and all of the other right. stuff. So it's not just sunscreen that these things are in, they're in a lot of other things. And the right answer is we need to test it to find out. Sure. My personal feeling is that it's been in all of these products forever and there's not this mass uh, you know, increase in cancers and developmental disabilities, you know, unless you're an anti-vaxxer maybe, but um, <laughs> then you might think that. Um, but either way, so we just need to test it, right? Um, and figure that out. Does, right. Is it going to cause the health effects? Well, because are, they are, they do get into your skin. And there are safe chemicals that do not get absorbed, right? So the one that I got for my dermatologist, which was not cheap, and I actually read the proper application of um, sunblock is a shot glass size mm -hmm. per like applications. So if you were out in the sun all day and you apply every two hours, that's a massive quantity. This bottle was like $50. I <laughs> that put, much I, sunscreen? Because I don't put that much that's, on. That's yeah, what it that is. is. I'm assuming it's probably for like bikini bod, like your whole body needs to be, because if you were out mowing the lawn, arms, face, maybe legs. But um, the dermatologist that I see was like, this is a really good one. It's pure mineral. And the only active ingredient in this one is zinc oxide. And I mentioned this study to her and she said, yeah, she goes, if you're at all worried about chemicals and she kind of did the whole, you know, moderation Whatever. type of, you know, yeah. okay, sure. Have melanoma. That's better. And, you know, like <laughs> look up the Mohs procedure, then you'll be putting this stuff everywhere. Yeah. But, um, she was saying that this does not get absorbed. And that's what I found to be true when I was doing my studies as yeah. well. So the main ingredients, uh, there's usually six main ingredients. Um, we're going to talk generalities, but understanding that the FDA is, 
estimated there's about 12,000 different sunscreen products out there, um, and they've only evaluated 1,200 of them. Oh, so, um, but we'll just talk in general. The six main ones, uh, the two that don't get absorbed would be zinc and titanium oxide. Um, those are too uh, heavy. They don't make it. Yeah, the, and they're the not fun. Like, they're goopy and <laughs> thick. That's what I found. <laughs> I'm no, I don't well, know if like, I've ever... look like, you know, we're in... Thailand or whatever and just you know mud faces <laughs> and I think that's why a lot of people don't like those ones because they're not very convenient and they're not attractive well and so the four other ones are going to be the one you mentioned the avabenzone there's oxybenzone there's octocrylene and a capsule um, and we can go through each one of those if you guys like and figure out what exactly that's doing for us but it's He's a like whole excited. lot of science. He's yeah, like a math sure. high school teacher. <laughs> like, let's, you know. <laughs> let's. <laughs> Who wants to do math? <laughs> Nobody. Who wants to do long division? <laughs> yes. yes. Um, to just talk about them specifically, the avabenzone that uh, April, you mentioned earlier. Um, it was approved by the FDA in 1988. Um, it, uh, what it's doing for you, it absorbs uh, a wide range of UV light. Um, so any, so it's kind of a broad spectrum, if you will. Um, its maximum absorption is about 357 nanometers. Um, the second one is going to be your oxybenzone. It absorbs UVB and UVA2 light, um, basically pretty much between 270 and 350 nanometers. Um, this is the one that uh, you know you can't have in Hawaii. Um, it's the one that's going to get into your system the quickest and stay the longest. Um, it, it has been shown to affect some hormone levels, uh, is specifically weak estrogens, um, and it has a potent anti-androgenic effect. So any androgen. Um, so this one has the most potential to be having health problems. However, it's in a ton of stuff mm. so if it was yeah since you know for a long time so right. if it was going to have these health problems might have seen it already um, the other one octocrylene um, that one absorbs uvb light and shortwave uva so between 280 and 300 nanometers and then the acampsil uh, filters out uva light in that 290 to 400 nanometers range um, and it, but it doesn't actually filter out the entire spectrum. So you, if you're just using a capsule, you have to use something else to get the rest of the UV coverage. And again, this is just all these sunscreens are doing is either taking the UV light, absorbing it, and dissipating it as heat, or it's reflecting it altogether. Um, and only in these narrow nanometer ranges. Once you get into super energetic, you're in UVC light, which 100% of that gets filtered out by the sun, and it's that's super damaging to you. That's what we use for. Or, uh, uh, in the back of our ambulances. That's the UV light that we're using to kill all of the bacteria. The UVC, it's also in, been in water treatment facilities since the 70s. It's, it's what we use to clean stuff. Um, anyway, so that's what all of these are uh, doing and how they work. And who knows if they cause health problems. We just know we can find it in your urine the second you put it on. Not the second, but you know, <laughs> within 24 after. hours. That sounds My like, oh, it's like yeah. asparagus. Pe exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I've heard. Uh, <laughs> I guess my thing, though, that's um, the bigger question, and we've always said this on here, is that um, I don't think sunscreen is the long-term or the best way to prevent sun damage. Or, like, I think the any amount of slathering this on all day long, like if you're a lifeguard, you know, maybe there's that job hazard and you might have to. But in general, if people would use other methods to prevent sun exposure and damage. So wearing hats with brims, um, wearing um, clothing that has a sun protecting factor as well. I forget what it's called now. We've mentioned it before in another episode that there's clothing that actually has like a rating mm, for, yes. you mm -hmm. know, blocking. Those would be better methods. You know, yeah, and then, just staying out of the sun in general. Right. Which well, isn't always practical. You know, yeah, people have to be I outdoors. Know. But I think realizing kind of the myths and the pros and cons of it, I think people think, oh, it's cloudy. I don't need sunblock. But in reality... Right. Well, yeah, the right answer is, is you know, avoid it the best you can. If you have to be out in the sun, put it on because you need to. And, and even after this study came out, the American Academy of Dermatology said apply the sunscreen because the risk benefit is going to be way more harmful, the UV rays, than the potential of these chemicals in your body causing health problems right. because uh, yes we haven't tested it but you know the anecdotal evidence says maybe it's not that big of a deal okay well and while over in thailand and japan i 
was noticing all the protection precautions they were taking and I realized that over there lighter skin is uh culturally term, yeah. yeah more beautiful right, that's right. what they're trying to achieve but I was telling my husband I was like no wonder they look like they're 20 when they're 50s like <laughs> they literally everybody has an umbrella yeah. they have long sleeves on they have the mud stuff on their face they they go to the extreme even the like <laughs> i took a lot of scooters around town um even the scooter drivers or if they had a short sleeve shirt on they had arm sleeves on right. with like covering up their knuckles like to their just their hands their fingers were exposed like right. it was incredible how much but it's so funny though because our culture is so different here and so we go to that these we're extremes. Trying to get brown. Yeah. Right. Well we yeah, right, right. But also additionally, like all the different products people use to look better and the you know, like people will go over and beyond like um, protein shakes and supplements and all these things to have a better looking body and stuff, but then some of the most obvious dangers um, and again, in moderation, I think if you're gonna go, you know, and spend a week on the beach then absolutely, you know, find that happy balance but I kind of like their methods I don't think it would be comfortable for me I'm a wimp when it comes to like heat I don't think I could wear like big no stuff I and you know I can do a hat and but I wouldn't be mowing the lawn in like full sleeves gloves all that kind of stuff no there's a level of laziness that I have to submit to yeah <laughs> and that's it I was totally lazy I'm always lazy. I don't care. I'm a burn me, you know, whatever. Yeah, the whole time I knew, like, we we were prepping for this episode. Yeah. Um, I was, the whole time I was over there, I'm like, I'm most likely going to get skin cancer. Because, like you said about your nose, that's pretty much the only place I put sunscreen was right. on my nose and on my shoulders, and that's it. Well, and again, so your though... your nose is going to look 20 and your face is going to look 60? <laughs> I doubt it. It's good to be yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, and again, though, I always come back to the sure. Same thing, like when you're on vacation, you eat worse, you probably drink more. You know, like you allow yourself to step out of what you know. But if you lived that way every day of your life, then it would probably be different. But yeah. So you know, like again, sure, fall off the wagon a little bit, be a little sloppy with your sun care and your alcohol intake. But yeah, you're on vacation, right? <laughs> I but actually think I ate more healthy. Cancer damage. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> I think I ate more healthy there. I loved their breakfast. They had served salads. Yeah. And rice. For breakfast. Salads and soups. Oh, and wow. that's yeah. why they're more fair skinned and skinnier. Yeah. They have a it totally was super healthy. Yeah. We're all carved up at yeah. breakfast and tanning. <laughs> well, I think it's the vast majority of super centurions are from Asia. It's exciting. It's Fun exciting. fact. Super centurions? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. Super, uh, so a centurion, somebody over 100 years old? Oh. So somebody centurion. who's over like that. Okay. Yeah. April and I both tried to play off. Like, I'm like, cool. That means we gave each other to look. Like, I don't know what that. Okay. <laughs> Old people got yeah. it. <laughs> well, funny story. I was doing a college paper for someone once, and that was the college paper I had to do was oh, really? on, uh, you know, what gets you to live past a hundred or whatever. Yeah. Anyways, I've had that discussion with my husband recently. It's like I'm not really interested in making it that far. Eighty four. My body, yeah, right. That's it's like what I early eighties. Like my body feels like it does right now, in the forties. <laughs> I don't want to be a hundred. Sounds yeah. not fun. I don't know, have you seen Dick Pernicky? That guy was like 84, yeah. 85 in Alaska. He was tromping through those words better than a 40-year-old. Yeah, but... He looked amazing. Yeah, healthy. but he's like the epitome of healthy, clean living. <laughs> it's true. You know, like just natural everything. Killing a moose, eating it, eating berries. Never come into contact with twigs. humans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Yeah. So, good for him. But I don't want to be killing a moose in the wilds of Alaska when I'm 84. <laughs> <laughs> I would be lounging on the beach in Thailand. Yeah. I really think that guy had a problem with women because the only like personal comment he ever made was like, this lake is like a woman. Calm one minute and then like <laughs> angry the next. And I was like, like ooh, that's a, why he went to Alaska. I bet he had like one bad relationship and banished himself forever. <laughs> <laughs> He's got interesting stuff though. Love that guy. Uh, so in summary, sunblock not necessarily proven to cause cancer sure it's got the chemicals that 
Yeah, those those the chemicals they're worried about are those four that can that can get absorbed into your body. The avabenzone, the oxybenzone. Um, the oxybenzone is the one they're most concerned about because there was a study that came out, uh, you know, quite a few years ago. I think it was about 10, 15 years ago, um, that said it was destroying the coral reefs. And so oh, right. Hawaii actually yes. bans sunscreens with oxybenzone in it. But since that time. It's kind of found out that maybe it's just global warming problems destroying the coral reefs, not that. So it's still, you can't have oxybenzone in your sunscreen mm -hmm. in Hawaii because of it. Um, well, but, actually, I would like you to talk more about that study, if you know more, because it's still, like, it was a hot topic even over in Japan oh, and really? uh, Thailand. Well, the study that said uh, that it was killing coral reefs, I only briefly skimmed because I was just more focusing on the, the chemicals because we might talk about those. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but... I, the second I kind of skimmed that, I came across four or five that were like, eh, maybe that's not really the case. So I think there's just controversy out there. Does, is it actually harming the coral reefs? Um, who knows, right? Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, like we said, in a 2008 study found that anybody over the age of six had, uh, or 96.8% of people over the age of six had oxybenzone in their system. Um, so, because it's in so many products. Um, Sippy cups and pacifiers yeah, and... It, it's <laughs> everywhere, right? Maybe. Right. And, and it is the most lipophilic so it, uh, chemical that's in those, basically meaning it can get absorbed by fat cells, which is fat cells are kind one. of the uh, outer layer of your skin. I knew that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did do a whole YouTube <laughs> thing on sunscreen, you misled liberal. I know. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> I love saying still that every hurts. time. It makes me happy. <laughs> Five years ago, it still hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it stings every time. Mm. You cut me deep. You cut me deep. <laughs> Whoever that commenter was. <laughs> it's actually one of the most funny things ever. We got a good laugh out of that one. It's like the dog shit show comment. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's good. Anyways. Well, if you liked what you saw or heard today, check us out on YouTube or a podcast. Or visit our website, medicalconfessions.com.